excited to be here. Um, my name is Andy. I'm a software engineer at Google working on the Beam Python SDK. Today, I will be talking about run inference, a new transform in Beam for making machine learning inferences. Here's the agenda for today's talk. We will start with some background uh, on a typical ML lifecycle and how the inference component has been previously lacking in Beam. I'll then introduce the run inference API, how to use it, uh, integrate it into various patterns, and also highlight some other features. Then I will talk about our vision for run inference going forward. And finally, I'll end with a demo. Let me begin by describing at a high level what a typical machine learning um, lifecycle looks like and how Beam fits into this picture. For machine learning training, you would typically begin with some sort of raw data as inputs, do some pre-processing, and then store the training ready data into some sort of intermediate data store like BigQuery. This of course can be easily facilitated with the Beam pipeline. In fact, this is already done by TFX, TensorFlow Extended, as they build their own pre-processing layers on top of the Beam library. With this data, you can then do your model training and validation. Once you have a tuned and trained model, you can store this model uh, artifact into a model registry or object store like GCS. Uh, this leads us into the next big question, which is the topic I'll discuss today. How can we take data as well as pre a pre-trained model and then do production level inference in batch or streaming pipelines? Uh, one thing to note, um, there are typically two modes uh, users can make inferences in. The first is a remote mode uh, where a model is hosted on some sort of remote service and then a pipeline makes uh, an RPC call with your input data and then receives uh, back the inference as a response. The other mode is uh, where the model is pulled onto a worker locally and then directly makes inferences there. And I'll be talking about this local mode of inference today. Uh, in the past, before Beam released 2.40, uh, developers really had two options to make inferences. Um, users of most machine learning frameworks had to write their own DoFun and code up all the necessary logic to load up the model, make inferences, and then process the outputs. While this is pretty straightforward for a quick prototype, um, and you know that's the beauty of writing a custom DoFun um, in or in Beam, it becomes much more work if you want to. Um, you know, want it to be ready for production level pipelines, especially if you're working with different models and different frameworks. The, the, the typical inference process has a lot of shared steps that are model agnostic. Um, and there are a lot of repeater boilerplate stuff that you just would not want to replicate over and over. So that that's a major pain point. Um, an exception to this is the TensorFlow run inference transform. TensorFlow users can use a library that TFX has written within their TFX BSL repository. Uh, which contains a utility class to make inferences. However, for this route, some friction points are that, firstly, it's not hosted in the Beam repo. Instead, it's under the TensorFlow slash TFX dash BSL repo, and therefore isn't as visible to Beam users and Beam developers. Secondly, this framework, of course, is, as the name suggests, ex geared exclusively towards TensorFlow. Um, so uh, because of this transform, um, Oh, this has inspired us to make a general run inference transform. So with the recent release of 2.40, users can use a run inference of Beam Transform to make productionalized inferences in their pipelines. So what's so great about it? First and foremost, um, run inference has a clean, simple, and unified API interface shared between all internal implementations and takes care of a lot of boilerplate tasks that most models have to do. For example, uh, using the shared class within run inference allows us to load the model only once per process and share it with all the DoFun instances created in that process. This reduces the memory consumption uh, and model loading time, leading to greater efficiency for the pipeline. We also implemented dynamic batching under the hood uh, for run inference. So to take advantage of the optimizations of vector by vectorized inferences that many mo models implement, we added the existing beam.batch elements transform as an intermediate step before making the actual prediction for the model. This transform batches elements together, and these batch elements are then applied with a transformation for the particular framework of run inference. 
For example, for NumPy arrays, we call it NumPy.stack. And for Torch tensor elements, we call Torch.stack. Other features of this run inference API right now include key forwarding, processing the output into a standard data class so that you can associate the output prediction to the original input, uh, producing standard metrics that are relevant to machine learning inferences, and then support for GPUs. So we introduced run inference implementations for PyTorch and scikit-learn frameworks in Beam 2.40. Um, like I mentioned earlier, TensorFlow users can technically already do this, but only through the TFX BSL repo. So that's why we have an asterisk there. And we anticipate a consolidation into the Beam repo soon. So how can you use run inference? Um, firstly, make sure you have version 2.40 or above and simply add code that looks like this from Apache beam.ml.inference.base, import run inference. Um, notice that you'll see something called the model handler object inside of run inference. I'll explain how that is used in the next slide. So to import models, you need to configure a model handler object that will wrap around the underlying model. Which model handler you import depends on the framework and type of data structure that contains the input. For example, if you're using scikit-learn model your input and your input data is a NumPy array, use scikit-learn model handler NumPy. For PyTorch tensors, use PyTorch model handler tensor. Uh, you will also need to specify a few other parameters for these handlers, such as the path to the pickle model for a scikit-learn model uh, or a state dict, um, otherwise, uh, aka uh, model weights to your PyTorch model. So if you have a key attached to your examples, uh, which is a typical pattern in uh, Beam pipelines, wrap your something called the key model handler around the base model handler object that you use. As you can see here, we import key model handler and wrap it around PyTorch model handler tensor. With this knowledge, you can now const start constructing more complicated pipelines, building ensembles that utilize different patterns like the AP pattern or sequential pattern. For the AP pattern, you can create a branch in your pipeline by applying different models to the same input AP collection. And if you want to do AP testing, this is perfect for that. Here we have a data read from some source, and then model handler A is passed to run inference to create model A predictions. Model handler B is passed to run inference to create model B predictions. You can also run models in sequence by chaining run inference calls in series. Here we can see that data is read from a source. We use model handler A to make inferences, creating the outputs called model A predictions. This is then fed in as an input to run inference that uses model handler B. When doing a prediction with run inference, the output P collection includes both the input examples as well as the inferences. Including both of these items, um, and the output allows you to associate the original input with the output for some reason, if for some reason you need that information to do any post-processing or other data manipulation where you need to extract that input information and make that association. Here we have a do fun called post processor, post processor that processes the output of an inference. Um, inside the process function, we unpack the tuple into a key and prediction result. Then to access the input, index using the example keyword, and for the prediction, index using the inference keyword. And then you can do any other processing and then return your result. Finally, run inference keeps tracks, uh, helps you keep track of certain types of metrics for monitoring purposes. Users can specify a namespace to which metrics for particular transforms can be associated. We've included metrics such as the number of inferences and the count, min, max, mean of information such as batch size, milliseconds per batch, um, and other information related to the actual inference such as latency and other model loading metrics. If you run this on Dataflow, for example, and go to the UI um, for that particular job, you can see metrics that look something like this image. So run inference in the future. Uh, here are some of the features that we're looking to work on uh, going forward. Right now, we 
always we have dynamic uh, batching and it's always done uh, under the hood while you can certainly configure uh, beam.batch elements behavior to for example turn off batching by setting max batch size to one we want to see if we can provide an easier way for uh, users to make batching optional users um, with a streaming pipeline may also want to update their model weights every now and then uh, let's just say they're your model weights are hosted in a GCS bucket and uh, that bucket gets updated monthly, then uh, it would be nice for us to easily uh, in the streaming pipeline, pull that new uh, state dict file. Um, we're looking to see if we can provide functionality for your side inputs to allow these model updates in real time. Um, and then thirdly, uh, while you can certainly make API calls to other services now, we, we'd like to build better integration with other remote services like Vertex AI. In terms of other frameworks, we're currently working with NVIDIA to develop a TensorRT implementation of run inference. Things look very promising, and we hope to have it ready very soon. Uh, and like I discussed earlier, we've already done PyTorch, Scikit-Learn, and TensorFlow. Other frameworks that we have in mind but haven't done yet are XGPUs, JAX, stats models, et cetera. And um, I'd like to remind everyone that Beam is open source and want to encourage the audience to contribute if you have uh, something in mind or want to work on one of these that uh, is displayed on, on screen, um, we have a base class in the Beam GitHub repo, and then you can feel free to implement off, off of the examples that we have already. Um, and if you have any questions, um, we'd love to hear them, make a PR, um, and or come talk to me. Um, yeah, uh, and here is the last link that contains related links, such as a general how to guide, um, documentation, um, and other example pipelines using run inference. Thank you. So now we will proceed towards a demo. Um, and I have a notebook here. I think everything is good. Yep. So here, um, this demo will, um, take a little bit of time to run. So what I will do is, um, it, it, because it requires uh, us to download uh, a few large models and spin up a, a pipeline job. So I will actually restart and run all. So don't worry, we will walk through all of the cells one by one. All right. So um, what is uh, today's demo about? So uh, in summary, so today we're going to be using the Takotron 2 and Wave r, &R model in a pipeline to synthesize high quality speech from text. So there are two models that we're using. One is the Takotron 2 model from NVIDIA, which is a recurrent sequence, sequence to sequence model to generate a spectrogram, uh, which, which is a representation of frequencies of sound waves from encoded text. And then we'll use the second model called wave r, &R to generate the audio waveforms from that spectrogram. So it's a, um, in this particular use case, we are basically chaining or running these run inference uh, transforms in sequence. So for my inputs, I'm just providing two um, sentences. Uh, here are some installations. We can ignore that, but uh, yeah. Um, I'm doing some standard imports, so uh, these are related to the actual model. Notice that I am importing from uh, Apache Beam.ml.inference some of the model handlers, the prediction result object, um, and in particular, since we're working with PyTorch, the two different types of PyTorch model handlers that we have currently, which is PyTorch model handler tensor and also key tensor. So. Here I have downloaded the Takotron 2 model and I'm saving the state dictionary to the local file system. I also do this for wave R and R. Um, here is a preprocessor and then here I'm defining some uh, just two funds that do some preprocessing before each of the different models. This is the Takotron preprocessor where I um, use a util 
that they have um, to prepare the text. For the Wave r, &R preprocessor, uh, similar thing, but notice here that um, because this is being um, processed after the Takotron 2 model, um, and the Takotron 2 model, remember each, each call of the run inference returns a prediction result, I need to unpack it um, in order to get the actual inference and then pass that inference again through the, through the pipeline. And here I am just defining a post processor that writes the audio files to, um, um, well, it, it, yeah, it, it creates um, an audio file and then we'll, we will be able to hear a playback of that. So here um, I'm creating a wrapper to limit the batch size. So um, we've noticed that in a lot of NLP problems, um, people are often working with variable length text strings and encodings. Um, and this is an issue that we've identified if you want to call torch.stack, which is actually done under the hood inside run inference um, for PyTorch. And uh, this can cause issues because you know we can't call torch.stack on variable length uh, tensors. So here I'm creating a, um, a wrapper class um, over my base model handler to override uh, the batch elements keyword args, which is the function <laughs> Uh, that will uh, basically provide this this custom batch size, max batch size to beam that batch elements. So essentially, we're limiting the batch size to one. And we are currently working on some other new features um, to allow users to more easily uh, handle different use cases like this. Um, and then finally, I am defining the, or well, instantiating the model handlers here with the state dict path. The actual model class is a model params, which will help us uh, instantiate the actual uh, model class. And I do the same thing with wave on and And here the pipeline is running, I think. Um, yeah, it might take a while. I do have a copy of this notebook that I ran. <laughs> Uh, in parallel in the event that this took longer than, um, you know, me, go, me uh, walking through this cell. So what you guys should be able to hear is... Main Summit 2022. And then... Keep Austin weird. So that's, <laughs> that's the output. Oh, okay. It looks like the pipeline just finished. Main Summit 2022. Keep Austin weird. And that's that's it. So um, here is a working demo of run inference, and I'm very excited about um, all the potential new features, and you know, uh, looking forward to seeing all the different models that you guys uh, will be able to use with run inference. And thank you for watching, and um, see you see you later. <laughs>